I got enough cushion. I'm going to be in the book of yeah, I'll win at that one, though. <laughs> Genesis this morning, chapter 3. Is it on me? Yeah. Somebody could have thought I'm going to knock it out of my key check real quick. Yeah, Ronnie, get my camera. <laughs> uh -oh. Did I do that? Yeah. No, you look good. <laughs> That's all right. People on Facebook are like, hey, wait, wait where'd he go? <laughs> Oh, well, good morning again to everybody here. Good to see everybody and whoever's watching on Facebook. Thank you for tuning in this morning. We're going to be in Genesis chapter 3 this morning. I'm going to, I'm going to start verse 6. I almost said chapter 6. On chapter 3, verse 6. Well, Adam and Eve in the garden. And... You know, Adam had uh, Adam had it made in the Garden of Eden at first. You know, he just yeah. uh, tending to the garden, tending to the, the vegetation, the fruit, the animals. God made woman so they wouldn't be alone. They had close communion with God. And then the serpent, serpent reared, reared his ugly head. <coughs> Making Eve, making Eve question, question what God had said about the about the certain fruit from the tree of tree of uh, knowledge of good and evil. So we pick up in verse six. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat. And gave also unto her husband with her. And he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open. Yeah. And they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together. Uh -huh. And made themselves aprons. <clears throat> and they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden. In the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God. Amongst the trees in the garden. And the Lord called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree, whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldst not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. Just threw her under the bus right away. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me and I did eat. So we'll skip this the next few verses, but the, but the Lord, you know, he... He gets on all three of them. Right. And we get to verse. He tells Adam in verse 18 that thorns and thistles, talking about the, the ground, the thorns and thistles shall I bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken. For dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. Unto Adam also, and to his wife, did the Lord God make coats of skin and clothe them. Father, we thank you for your word. I ask that you just bless this message. Lord, I ask that you just open the ears and the hearts and minds of everyone here today to receive this message and all those who may be watching on live stream to receive this message Lord I thank you for giving me the scripture give me your thoughts Lord and I'll preach the message the way you want it preached 
We ask this in the name of Jesus. Everyone said, Amen. 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 So here we are at the beginning of creation. <coughs> you have the first couple, Adam and Eve. As I said, God made woman as a suitable companion for Adam. They tended to the garden. Everything was great. He didn't really have to toil hard. He didn't know what sweat was. And of course, he formed them without clothing. But at first, they weren't ashamed. They didn't, it was no big deal that they were naked because they were, they were clothed with the purity of God's love. So there was no shame. He had no need for clothing. And Adam would talk with God. In the daytime, they, 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 they would stroll through the garden, have conversations, had close, close, intimate relationship with God. Could have had, could have had paradise on earth. <clears throat> Or for him, for Eve, for their offspring, their offspring could have been a paradise for all, for all the times everybody's been on earth. But of course, Satan would have none of that. No, we can't have. They, we can't. I can't. I can't let them have it easy like that. Let me see if I can spring some doubt in there. So as you read, you see that he tempts Eve, and well, has God said? Did God really say he would die? Is that what he meant? You know, just, just getting into Eve's head until she couldn't resist. He noticed God didn't just <clears throat> admonish the serpent and Eve. He, you know, he got on Adam too. Because Adam was standing right there. He's there the whole time. When the serpent first reared his ugly head, he should have just told him to get out. Or better yet, get a stick and beat the serpent to death. I don't know if they ate meat at that point, but he could have just, you know, filleted the snake, had some fricassee, whatever. Could have had a good lunch. Or even after Eve had eaten it and offered it to Adam, Adam still had that chance. Amen. Say, hey, whoa, hang on. Don't you remember what God said? Don't you remember what he told us? He could have refused at that point, but he decided to go outside the will of God. Decided to go outside those boundaries of the close communion he had with God up to that point. He decided to go down the broad path. Well, Jesus said the, the wide path leads to destruction. It's the narrow path that leads to salvation, but there are a few that make it on that path or stay on that path. So their eyes are open. You know, their conscience is now open. Now they, now they know. Oh, hey, we don't have any clothes on. What are we doing? So they, they look. They find some fig leaves and says, and it says in there that they made an apron. So trying to cover his mistake, trying to cover his sin. By his own works. Yeah. Now when I think of an apron, I think of the kind that mom would wear in the kitchen. Now some some aprons only covered the waist. Some were maybe full, you know, covered the whole front. But if you remember, aprons did not cover the back. So they still weren't sufficiently covered because they were trying to do it on their own merit. 
trying to impute their own righteousness, which as the word of God says, that our righteousness is but filthy rags. So Adam rebelled. And in that, in what seems like just a tiny act, a tiny act of rebellion sealed our fate. No longer would we have paradise on earth. No longer would it be easy living. Now he had to work. He had to work the ground. He had to sweat. It would take effort now. Because of rebellion. If you remember, Samuel told Saul that rebellion was just as bad as witchcraft. It was that heinous. Sometimes we think that our sins are insignificant. Oh, it's just a tiny sin. And then we think that we can cover it up. We think that we can uh, do right on our own merits. And we, try, we try to cover ourselves with different things. We try to cover ourselves with church. We try to cover ourselves with religion. We try to cover ourselves with a denomination. Or I'm covered because I listen to Pastor Lynn, I listen to Pastor Mike, I listen to Evangelist Terry Green, I listen to, I listen to Evangelist Rod Vincent, whoever it may be. I'm covered, I'm covered under Jimmy Swaggart Ministries. But it's not enough. <clears throat> or we try to hide from God much like Adam did yeah. Adam heard God coming yeah. and he's like hi just get behind something you know just like what do I do <laughs> like me trying to hide behind this face right now <laughs> you know God can still see me even the people on Facebook, they, you know, like, what is he doing? You know, God's calling. Hey, Adam, where are you at? Um, I'm over, I'm over here, Lord. I, you know, I'm naked. Really? And who told you that? And that's when it got real. All because of the lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, the pride of life that John talks about in his book. You know, I mean, the fruit looked good. The tree looked good. I'm sure it was a beautiful tree. I'm sure the fruit was beautiful. That's always depicted as an apple, but it never really says for sure what the fruit was. I mean, apples are pretty. But whatever the fruit was, apparently it was very... Very appealing. And plus there was the lure of, well, I'm not really supposed to have that. <laughs> you know, you remember when you're a kid and mom says dinner will be ready in 15 minutes. Don't eat any snacks. <laughs> Don't eat any cookies. Stay away from those cookies. Do not go near that cookie jar. Do not touch that pie that's in the refrigerator. Other for the church ladies. <laughs> you know, but uh, you know, the mom, maybe mom had to go to the other room for a minute. So you're like, man, supper's still 15 minutes away. I'm hungry. Oh man, those cookies. Look at those cookies. Sure, you get that. Oh man, look at that pie. Apple pie too, my favorite. Oh man, yeah, I'll just, I'll just get, I'll just get a little fork here. I mean, yeah, she won't, yeah, she won't. I'll just, I'll just take a little bite. Oh man, that was so good. And then, oh man, maybe just, maybe just one more bite. And it's like, oh man, oh wow. Well, okay, 
hey, maybe maybe they won't really pay attention to that little hole I just made. And they'll just come in. Like, oh man, mom's coming in. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, uh, nothing. <laughs> I almost, almost, I almost. You ate the pie. Yes, ma'am. Well, in the old days, get sent to your room without supper and with a sore bottom. <laughs> so it was double whammy. Now, uh, you know, God really could have laid down a whammy on Adam and Eve. He could have just destroyed them. It's like, you know, if you're not going to obey me, then I'm done with y'all. I'm done. I don't. I don't need. I don't need man or woman. So goodbye. And though it seems his punishment was harsh, yet he did show some grace. Because he did still provide the herb of the field, even though the man would have to work for it, he was still, there was still food to be had. And then God showed them, your covering, your way, your way of taking care of this sin is not enough. So let me show you And so, an innocent animal or two, I don't, I don't remember how many, innocent animals had to be killed. There had to be a sacrifice. Yeah. Blood had to be shed yeah. to cover the sin of mankind. This, of course, was the foreshadowing of the ultimate sacrifice that would happen Thousands of years later. Yes. But this, the God was showing them what was to come through the, through the years. First, there would be animal sacrifices. There would be shedding of blood. But as we know, only animal, the blood of animals only covered the sins. It didn't wipe them out. It only covered the sins. But God would see that sacrifice. And he would forgive their sins. Then when Jesus came, he would have to go to the cross. None of us were good enough. There was no one born of man that was good enough to be the sacrifice for all the sins of the world. All the sins that had happened since Adam and Eve. All the sins that happened up to that point. All the sins that would happen after Jesus. As long as, as, long as man is on earth, there's going to be sin. Because we're born into the sin nature. Man's seed was corrupt. That's why Jesus was born of a virgin, conceived by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Only he could fulfill the law. Only he could adequately give us covering for what we had done. Yeah. Only by his shed blood that he gave, that he, that he shed willingly. Because he said no man could take his life. But he laid it down freely. Laid it down for the people. Laid it down for all of us. Yes, amen. He laid down his life, shed his blood. <coughs> and his precious blood didn't just cover our sin. It eliminated it. Gave us a clean slate. Whereas before, well, these are my notes, but just pretend it's a list of sins. You know, here, here's all my sins. Well, I'm sure it'd be, a, it'd be a longer list than that. Here's your sins, Michael. 
There's nothing you can do to make it right. You, yeah, you can, oh yeah, I can take, I can try to erase it, but the mark will still be there. But thanks to what Jesus did at Calvary, he gave you a clean page. He gave me new life. Yeah. A new heart. And there are so many things that can garner our attention in this world. You know, there's there's sports, there's uh, there's television, movies, there's just so many things out there. And we know that we shouldn't do some of those things. We know that there are things out there that we shouldn't do. There are movies we shouldn't watch. We know we shouldn't be just lounging around on the couch on Sunday morning, ignoring God. But the temptation is there. And the temptation is strong. But whatever, but whatever that temptation is, we all, you know, we've all had to deal with our forbidden fruit in the past, whether alcohol, uh, drugs, pornography, sexual immorality. Every one of us has had some kind of forbidden fruit that we gave into, that we that we partook of because it looked good or it felt good. It tasted good. If sin wasn't pretty, none of us would do it. Amen. <clears throat> or if the pain was immediate, we wouldn't do it. Because we know the wages of sin is death. To die in sin is not a good thing. Even worse, to die in our own righteousness. To think that we've done enough. To think that, okay, I'm covered. I'm, 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 uh, I'm covered. My sin is covered. But God exposes that as, no, you're not. I still see your sin. You can't hide from me. We can't hide from God. We can't run from God. No, you can't. You know, we can. <clears throat> uh, no matter where you go, um, you know, go to the mountaintops, go to the sea, go inside the deepest, darkest cave you can find. He's there. Like, hey, where are you going? Remember me? It's so much better when we admit our sin, when we confess our sin. If Adam had just, even after Adam and Eve ate of the fruit, you know, if they had just come to God as soon as they, as soon as they heard Him walking through the garden, they just, said, Lord, man, we, we messed up. I'm so sorry. I don't know what I was. Th I wasn't thinking, Lord. I'm so sorry. Uh, you know, I let, I let, you know, the serpent got into our heads, and we we, we doubted your word, and we, we ate of the fruit, and now we we know that we're naked, and now we're ashamed to be in front of you as we are. But Adam didn't do that. He couldn't do that. No, he had to. He was. A, he, he let fear. He let fear get the best of him. Let his own. He let his own thinking. He let his own ways blind him to the grace of God. Just as we do sometimes. 
We let our we let our thinking, our righteousness, we let it we let it cloud our judgment. Sure. Sometimes we think, well, if I, you know, well, if I just if I just come to church more, um, you know, I'll do, I'll just I'll just read a I'll just read a couple more chapters in my Bible tonight. I'll um, I'll, I'll throw ten dollars at that beggar at the intersection. Um, yeah, I mean, sh surely, surely that'll, surely that'll work. Surely that'll be enough. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll raise my hands in church. You know, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll actually sing. I'll come on Sunday night. I'll come on Wednesday night. I won't, I won't be Sunday morning only, or I, I won't be, I won't be a Christmas Easter only. I'll come to church every Sunday. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Those are nice efforts. Things we should do as Christians. But the only way we get into heaven is by the grace of God. Amen. It's by grace yeah. we are saved. Yeah. Not by works lest we should boast. So if there's, any, if there's any forbidden fruit in your life right now, think on it this morning. Yes. If you if you've eaten the forbidden fruit, whatever it may be, don't try to cover it up yourself. Yeah. Don't try to hide. God is right here this morning. He's in our presence. Yes. He knows what you He knows what you've done. If there is anything in your heart that you need to confess, and I would urge you to confess it this morning. And if there is no sin, if you if you've already confessed, hallelujah. But still, I seek the Lord this morning. While we're gathered here, seek the Lord. Ask for his strength, because our strength is not near enough. Ask for his strength to, to, to withstand that serpent, to withstand Satan, yeah. to withstand that forbidden fruit. <coughs> Chris. Let's bow our heads this morning and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace. Because of your grace, we have salvation. Oh Lord, forgive us for the times that we've partaken the forbidden fruit. Forgive us for the times that we've gone outside your will, for those times that we rebelled, for those times that we thought it was just a small, insignificant sin. Oh Lord, all sin is, is bad in your sight. So Lord, forgive us our sins. Forgive us for those times we've tried to cover it up by ourselves. Lord, let us be bold. Let us, ne let us never be afraid to approach you. Let us never be afraid to approach you no, no matter what, what the cause may be. No, Lord, just wash us clean with the precious blood of Jesus. Oh Lord, we just give you praise and honor this morning. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Everyone say